The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. Hi, and welcome to another episode of We're Done Here. We are here this week with our lovely guest, Sherry Soprani. Or what, Soprani? Soprani, Soprani. Soprani. Cipriani. Sherry Soprani. Sorry, I said that wrong. How you doing, Sherry? I'm good. Mika Mo, it's good to be here. <laughs> I love Mika. I'm, I'm so excited. Ha- I'm so happy to have you. I, I met you, I think I met you like two years ago? When I first started, a year and a half. Well, yeah, year, oh, a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Damn, you may have not been doing comedy that long as well. No. But you be outside, though. Yeah, I'm crying. Well, a new person, you be, yeah. you be outside. So I appreciate you for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have your own podcast. I did your podcast. What's it called? The De- Degenerate Boomer? Yeah, with Cindy Arena. Shout yeah. out, Cindy. We had Cindy on last year. She yeah. was talking about gastric bypass. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope she took that. I don't know. If you go back to the episode from last <laughs> season. But yeah, Cindy Arena is your partner. And yeah, you've been out here grinding for the last two years. Yeah, just hustling. Just grinding. My work ethic is crazy because I'm old. So. I got it. <laughs> You know? <laughs> and I like that Sherry's always talking about being old, so that's yeah. funny. Uh, and then, you're, where are you from, Delaware? I'm from Delaware originally. Yeah. Okay, but you've been in New York forever. Uh, almost 20 years. Okay, yeah, so that's um, that. You're, you're in New York. my life, yeah. You're in New York at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also, another thing about Sherry that's very, very funny and interesting is that, wait, is you a, you're kind of crazy. <laughs> I'm a wild beep. You allowed to curse or no? Uh, yeah, you can curse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a yeah. wild bitch, bro. Yeah, you yeah. you crazy as hell. I've, I've like tamed down a lot. Okay, you I were have. crazier before. Yeah, I'm a reformed criminal and recovering addict. Oh, so. nice. Okay, reformed yeah. criminal, recovering addict. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But that, I do like that about, I, I do like your crazy ass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. How is it like doing comedy one and a half year in? I guess I'm not that long doing comedy, but it seems like. No, oh, yeah. I had to figure it out. You know, I had to just figure it There's no, like, blueprint no. for it, you know, and... and you're still figuring it out. I'm I'm still I don't even know <laughs> I'm still doing just premises, setups, and then like I'm just getting good at punchlines okay. barely. Got it, got you know, got like it. I'm I'm like figuring out how to maneuver the punchline in because that's the hardest part for me is the got is the punchline. It. Okay, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, you'll get you'll get there. It's a journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kind of figure out the punchline work backwards. Okay. Um okay. like this would be funny, but this is not this is not why we're here. Sorry to talk about comedy. No. Um <laughs> no, well we gotta throw it in there. You right? gotta throw it in there. Yeah. But this is we're done here pod, so emotional wellness comedy podcast, uh, cause we are are comedians at the end of the day, but we're here to talk about emotional wellness, and we're actually going to talk about a topic that we've talked about before, mm-hmm. uh, which is coming out, but we've never had a lesbian talk <laughs> about it, yeah. And like, do you identify, because maybe you're identifying as weird shit, but like, <laughs> you was a lesbian, right? I am a lesbian, and I'm riding that wave until the day that I die. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, th- yeah, tell us about your yeah, your coming out story. Tell us, like, you know, uh, I came out in 1996. Damn, okay. Yeah, I was 14 years old in Delaware. Where I was the only gay person in like the whole. You were not the area. only gay. Out. I was the only, the only out person. Out out only. There was these lesbians up the street that were in their fifties, and they okay. both had mullets and wore flannels and mm. like chain wallets and shit. Okay, that's weird. Um, but other <laughs> other than that, I didn't. No one in my high school was gay. None okay. of, no one in my friend group was gay. So. I had to go underground. It was underground. It's mainstream now. Yeah, being it's mainstream gay now. nowadays, but yeah. not ninety six. No, it was wild. It was like the so wild, you, wild you west. You came out like just because. Yeah. See, I I was fourteen, and it was the summer going into ninth grade. And I was going to an all girls Catholic high school because oh. I had gotten kicked out of public school. God, that, that makes sense. And that so does. I was nervous, you know. I was like, I was nervous, and I had gotten drunk one night off. Of, I think it was Saint Ives Special Brew in Alizé. You remember Special that drink? Brew. <laughs> and I told all my friends just drunk, you know. So that was, it, it just came out. And then oh, you my, told your friends drunk. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It just sense. came okay. out. And then, well, I told them they, I was bi. Well, they like the day. Why is everybody bi at the beginning? Because I was scared and had Got a lot it. of shame. No, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But were they like we knew, or they were? They yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they, they knew. They could tell. They knew. Okay, they, they could, could tell. tell. Okay. They could tell. Yeah. They could tell. But were you? Were you wearing like? Because the, the back in the '90s, <laughs> yeah. everybody used to wear baggy shit, right? It's all back now. Oh yeah, all no, the same. I noticed that. All... Sorry, were you wearing like were you dressing lesbian? Not to be like <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. I mean that's like, I dress like I do now pretty much. It's like Jenko jeans. You remember them? The wide legged the big, the the big, big jeans, skater jeans. Yeah. I had a um He was a skater boy, boy a sexy little boy. Little boy. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah, Go hell on. yeah. That's why I mess with I love Mika. I love Mika. No, and I had a um long hair and I 
shave the back of my head. They call it an undercut now. Oh. But back then, like I said, it's like the lesbian bat signal. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> if you saw that, man, you, you were like... Yeah, okay, that girl, got it. That girl likes to, you know what I mean, tap to ass. You got know? it. So in so. Delaware, you're the only lesbian out. So how does prom look? How does social non I never went to prom. I never went to homecoming. I uh, never went to any of the dances. Oh. I would go and hang out at the dances and, like, smoke weed after or drink yeah. after. But, yeah, no, I never... I also got kicked out of high school in 11th grade for being gay. For being gay? Wait, mm-hmm. talk about that a little bit. It was a, it's in, it's in an Italian Catholic high school, mm-hmm. and um, you got kicked out if they found out you were gay or pregnant because it's Catholic. Yeah. Oh, damn, yeah. the Catholics are... Yeah. Are you Catholic or you're Italian? I mean, I'm born, I was born yeah, yeah. and raised Catholic, but... I mean, so they literally kicked you out for being gay. They did. And there's no like, that's like, okay, because it's it, religion. Oh, God. That's yeah, there's no. And then the other girls got kicked out for being pregnant. So. Oh, okay. I'm sure there was mad pregnant bitches at that school. There was three or four. Oh, okay. Yeah. All those bitches got kicked out? Yeah, yeah. And they wanted them to keep them babies, too. They, they did keep them. Oh, they well, kept them. fucking Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> they got kicked out for being gay, and they got kicked out for being straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They got kicked out for <laughs> Right, yeah. both ends of the spectrum. That is why. Wait, so yeah. how did your family take you coming out? Uh, my mom, so we didn't have the internet or cell phones or anything like that back then, so I used to write letters to my girlfriend. Okay. Oh, you had a girlfriend, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, look at you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I met her in, like, coffee like coffee shops at, like, Spoken Word. Oh, okay. And I didn't go there because I like Spoken Word or anything. I just knew, like, maybe girls who the like girls would go like there. Yeah, it's like poetry and shit. I was like... <laughs> yeah, you know bitches like poetry. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, the bitches will be in there, you know? <laughs> so I used to write her letters, and then she would write me back because she lived, like, a half hour away, and we didn't drive drive because we were still too young and my mom found one of the letters Uh, she sat me down she was like white trash as hell you know ghetto white trash like you a (laughs) lezzy what are you a lezzy my daughter is not gonna be no lezzy and i was just like no mom i'm bi i like guys and girls but i was lying okay okay did you hook up with guys just to be like i've had sex with five guys oh that's a lot of men yeah one time each well one one guy was a few times but one one time each. okay cool so no there's like a gold star whatever anyway that's this generation god yeah they be doing all that shit Um, i had to figure it out so all right so your mom is like and so then did she accept it eventually no i got kicked out at 14 at the house yeah yeah so i was living with um um, I was also in and out of rehab. Okay, what so was, a lot what of moving of, parts. This is not about that, but what type I of know. drugs? Were you doing drugs to deal with your yes. sexuality? Yeah, Got yeah, it. yeah. So yeah, what type yeah. of drugs do you not to get in your business? No, I, I used to shoot heroin. Really? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, not that you, you know, not I mean, that I need to know, but I've been clean for over a decade. That's a long time. So, also yeah. hard to get on fucking heroin. I had to get on methadone. Yeah, as most people do. I yeah. had to get on methadone and then. You figure it out, you know. No, that was congratulations so, to you. That's a big, yeah. That's a big. We should have did an episode of that, but I like this coming out story. How's all no, entertaining? It's, it's crazy. It's no, a, it's I, love a wild, it. I love it. Well, not to wild. be. I love your trauma, but um. <laughs> no, it made me who I am, and I'm so you. So you got kicked out of school, then you get kicked out of your house. So I got kicked out later in school. So I got kicked out of my house in like. So I was like in tenth grade at that point when okay. she found out, and I lived with. So I was in and out of AA and NA. Got it. And when I was, you were younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I started going to, um, that's when I first learned crowd work. In the, uh, in the AA rooms, baby, you know. Just talking <laughs> shit in AA to people. <laughs> no, I'm just my kidding. name. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I, no, but, um, so yeah, so my sponsors, I would live with them. And then we had like, each sponsor had their sponsor, and so they would rotate houses where I would stay. Oh wow! So, so I had I had like a community and like a family. It was like foster oh, care, wow. pretty much. Yeah. Oh wow, that's yeah, that's crazy. They all took turns giving me rides to school, giving me bus passes, feeding me. Sometimes my mom would send them money. She would send okay. them money sometimes for food. Was she really food. that? Like, was she just like? Did she knew these people were taking care of her children? Like, I mean, a part children? of me wanted to leave too. So Die. it was like a it was like a push in a pool. You so. have siblings. Or I have like... a younger brother. Got it. And he mm-hmm. just stayed in the house? Unbothered? Yeah, he's he's um he's a straight white male, likes guns and cars and she you was know. just like, okay. He's like, yeah. Got yeah. it. Wow, that's crazy. That's tough. So your sponsor, so you found community within the AA community, which yeah. is a AA honestly, like the big book and all the other shit. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a great foundation for like discovering who you are. I live by like all that. those principles today. Got even it. though I drink and smoke weed now. Well, whatever. But, Such is yeah, life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, inventory, moral inventory, my shortcomings, you know. Yeah. A lot of it's religious, too. Like A lot of it's on some religious bullshit. The first, a lot of the steps are religious, yeah. But I'm not, I'm, I, 
I'm like spiritual. I'm not a you know no, atheist no, I, I or get anything. What, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So you so you have this community. Are are there are there queer people in that community you can look up to or connect with or not really? There was one lesbian. She was older. She was in her fifties. Um, but yeah, no. There was some older gay men that were pretty cool. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah, no. For the most part, it was all brand new. There was no gay people on tv yet like remember roseanne had like darlene who kind of looked like me yeah, but she, she was darlene still straight was, oh yeah darlene was she had a boyfriend she was definitely a lesbian <laughs> yeah she had a boyfriend we didn't really have any there was no ellen yet there was no queer eye there was no, no ellen no we didn't have any of that ellen came out much later so wow. there was no one to look at and be like you know like no like musicians no one like that got i could think it, of it, it, it came it. later in the 2000s but not yeah. in that time period so. got it got it so how do you yeah so what do you do from there you have no like what happens next like in terms <sighs> of like after Man. high school i got kicked out in 11th grade and then i got my ged um i gradu- graduated with my ged in the year 2000 mm-hmm. which is would have been the same year i graduated high school so um then i got with this girl who was a few years older than me Okay. And she, you know, she pretty much was like my sugar mama and like took care of oh, me. Nice. And, sugar, get you a yeah. sugar mama. I don't <laughs> yeah, know if she little... was predatory. I don't know how much older she was, but uh, get you not, a sugar mama within much, your age but... range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah she, she was straight. She has kids now and stuff, but. Um, She's straight? Yeah, she was straight, but. She's straight. Yeah, no. she was. I mean, she, we got down, you know what I mean? <laughs> we got down and dirty with it, but. Yeah, she. she seven years i was with her but in between those seven years i was messing with other people she was messing with other people but yeah. i got like a, an apartment with her God. and like you know like i fit at 17 i got my first apartment with her and f- just try to figure it out you know just no, try to figure that, it out that makes sense oh my god that's yeah that's so traumatic so you kind of feel like your relationship with her kind of helped you figure out who you was yeah uh, who you were in your sexuality who mm-hmm. you were as a person so yep. did that help you mentally or was that a destructive time period tell us about like it, it was i mean what? before i met my wife now i'm not messed with nothing but crazy what girls did you meet your I met her in here in New York. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, and she's very normal, opposite of me. Your wife is pretty normal. She's like a normal, (laughs) nice woman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's a teacher. (laughs) She's an author. Like she's a regular, regular girl. But I mean, she's freaking the bed. You know what I mean? But (laughs) but she, Sherry. But she, she's a lady in the streets. You know. No, but I, yeah. I do like your wife. So th- do you feel like when you she met your wife... She likes you too. She said hello, by the way. Oh, okay. Told her yeah. so hi. Yeah. Do you feel like when you met your wife, you kind of found that stability or was it like a rocky road after that? <laughs> rocky road. She was She was like, you're wild. Like, you're too crazy for God. me. You're wild. If you don't straighten... Like, so it came in like like bits and pieces. Like, you need to do this to be a better person. Then I would do that. And then I would press the line more okay. and do something else. And she'd be like, you what can't you do doing, that either. What were you doing in terms of pressing the line? Was it Getting around? arrested. Oh, I, I was what? stealing Not- from like CVS and like... Oh. Um, yeah, DUI. Ah, oh, um, got it, got it, got it. Get into fights a lot, like fist fights, being drunk and mad and sagging. This is all pre therapy. So. Got it, got it. Oh, yeah. wow, got yeah. it. So your wife, you call me your wife, she's like, I can't deal with this crazy bullshit, yeah. bitch. Take yeah. your shit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, so she, she kind of puts you on that trajectory. And then what do you do to actually, like, reconcile like it sounds like you were angry like right so much rage it's, and anger it sounds like you had yeah. a lot of rage and anger that you were trying to deal with so how do you how did you reconcile that and where did you did you like leave 12 steps like how did oh, you, yeah okay yeah, so how, yeah. did you, how did you come like to a better place so when i left delaware is when i left a 12-step program mm-hmm. when i when i moved up here over 20 years ago so what i did was um my my best friend had shot herself in the head in 2015. Wow. Yeah, and she made a video and said that I was one of the reasons because I was like, get your shit together. I was mean. I was a mean person, you oh, know? I was wow. like, you're yeah, a loser. Yeah, yeah. You're a bum. Get off the junk. Like, come on, one foot in front of the other. Like, no vulnerability, no... Yeah, yeah, I regret yeah. it horribly. So from 2015 to, like, 2018, I was just, like, so mad, so angry. And... um got in a fight with my wife's friends who are like these really white rich lawyers and they were like being racist yeah and i called them out on it, got it. but i was drunk and i did it in the completely the wrong, world, way. The wrong way yeah, <laughs> yeah like it was bad so she almost lost all her friends because of me like flipping uh, out like that got it. and it's something so minor you would think i would get better from something else but it's yeah. like all of that led up to that and i got, got uh, therapy voluntarily Oh, okay. Not court stipulated, so. Okay, not court yeah. stipulated. He was like, it wasn't court stipulated, bitches. I went voluntarily. I, I like. 
<laughs> got myself a participation <laughs> ribbon. So how long have you been in therapy? Uh, three years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, the first year or two was with a, a female therapist, and then I had to switch to a, um, a white male. Okay. Because I just, I've had sex with two of my therapists in the past that were women. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, no, why I did. Sex with none of my therapists. <laughs> you know, Delaware was crazy. Man. Yo, wild up yeah. in Delaware. What yeah, but they were in their twenties, right out of college. Okay, so they was ghetto. It was therapy. still unethical, but like, but yeah, yeah. But the, why are they sitting with their patients? But anyway, because there so weren't you, many gay people around, so okay. it was like, oh, the, okay. Anyway, <laughs> who knew? But anyway, you got yourself a white man, um, so I could relate, not relate more to him, but I could just be more you open. Just be, you know, you're not trying to impress a woman. Yeah, no judgment. Yeah, if I say something that's like out of pocket, that that I need to get out and say, like, a woman might judge me and be like, you're a sociopath, you know? Got but it. he'll he would be like, try to bring me back and, like, work it out with me and figure it out. So. Got it. Okay, that's, yeah. that's interesting. So mm -hmm. your journey, you're, you have a recent journey. You just started, um, yeah. you started, like, about three years ago mm -hmm. in therapy and mm -hmm. you've gotten better. Yeah. Uh, you've been sober. Like, what is, do you have any advice for, like, younger i mean now it's different because like i don't know well it's not different because lgbt uh q crimes are up they like, are I, they're, it's, it's like, trans trans crimes are up very they're, trans they're, black and women you know, it's yeah. like leading it's like leading all quote you know black people the racial group is still yeah black people and jews are the people that are still like we're facing a lot of hate mm -hmm. but on top of that it's the queer community that's facing the most hate yeah a man just died in Brooklyn for Dancing to Beyonce. Yeah, they, they, so like, they brought up that this bar in Brooklyn, uh, this guy he set the bar on fire. I don't know if you remember that last year at Pride. Oh, yeah, that's set the right. bar on, It feels like the old days. That's that's what I told it my does, friend. It, it feels like feel the like... 90s again, early 2000s, like the hate. I think Trump being in office and yeah, like he led to like a it. like this domino this effect. Of yeah. like people just getting. Yeah. So what would be your advice to like uh, younger lesbians who are kind of going through like the same thing you went through and dealing with your sexuality, being angry, dealing with the yeah. family, throwing them out and all this other bullshit. Yeah, I just feel like this generation has so much more emotional intelligence than my generation mm. did. I think they have many, like, a lot more resources that they can reach out to. They yeah. they have, like, gay straight alliances. They have um, gay comedy shows. They have gay everything. Yeah, they do. They are gay Everything's everything. Everything's gay. Yeah. So even just... I produce, like, a queer comedy show. I'm not even queer. <laughs> well, like, you better get me I'm on it. I need to get on that comedy oh, yeah, that's show. that's right. But... <laughs> I'm a year and a half in. She'll put me on there one day. Watch. Well, no, will, okay. <laughs> but go on, no go on. but yeah so i would say like g lean on your support system yeah like lean on your support system your chosen family and you know like therapy and like work your mental you know no that, that yeah. that's great you know, it's, i feel like tiktok is helpful like i feel like the young gay kids yeah. on tiktok they find a lot of community there they really Not do to be all old but like the young gay kids yeah you know that tiktok <laughs> that ticky tack there on that tick, tick, tack. <laughs> but if you gotta throw hands throw hands no i'm just kidding no, I, I mean, I, I, mean, I still I do it. That, but sometimes uh, I still do. <laughs> Sherry, you know I'll be doing it. I know. You, know you I be... just said I'll punch you. <laughs> we'll go there. We'll go there. I, was like, I, was, I did tell somebody I would punch him in their face today. That's why um, I said, I have your back. Let's go. No, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, but no, okay, that that is uh that yeah that that is really really helpful. Thank you so much for like sharing your story around that. So what do you do now, like in terms of um your day to day to make sure you know you don't you not only like hold yourself accountable to your wife, but you don't backslide it's yeah. been like three years like what do you do is comedy a part of that like yeah comedy is a, a huge part of that because I, it's like i had to my jokes are like very traumatic but i'm trying to like work them to make them be like less traumatic and more funny god you know because some people are like ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cringe but okay, bitch. i mean people be cringing you know? though yeah. but, like, but then whatever. and i work it out i change this word comedian. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and I, I just switch words around or you know switch flip it up switch it up whatever and just work on that and i also go to therapy once a week um yeah and i just i hang out with like good people that i'm aligned with now that i uh, yeah community yeah finding good people that you're aligned with and not mm -hmm. problematic people yeah it's very important do you feel like uh, is being in comedy triggering at all or no. not it's more of a release yeah because a lot of these people are like younger like yeah, they're like in their like 30s boys. and a lot in their 20s and they're just so sweet and like wholesome and people are very nice yeah like i, I feel like if i would have started comedy when i first moved here 20 years ago it would have been a, really harder like for 90, me oh, yeah it would have been like early 2000s yeah like 2004 it would have been was really crazy back then too i know it was crazy it was still crazy you yeah. know i don't know if it would have been better or worse but i just feel like i'm, I'm more welcomed now God, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm more, even if they're putting me on because i'm they need a gay white girl on their show or yeah. whatever or a gay girl whatever i'm 
I'll I'll do it. You know? No, like, no, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, that does make sense. Like feeling more welcome now. There's yeah. being more community. I even joke like everybody's everyone's queer. I was like, all these white bitches ain't yeah. gay. I no, man, they're <laughs> fake bisexuals, bro. Yeah, all bi- of Brooklyn is fake bisexuals. They're fake because they're, I was like, you bitch. ain't licking pussy, bitch. He's like you <laughs> is not bisexual. You made out with a girl at a party. Shut up. Right, um, right. Um, but okay, that makes sense. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Sherry. Like, so and you have so many interesting stories. I feel like I could talk to you for hours about everything like you went through. Uh, but I do like the tips that you gave our audience members. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of done with your trauma of coming out, I assume, um, or still working through it. I'm, I'm microdosing on mushrooms now. A lot of people do now. Yeah, and um, my therapist recommended it's like this magnetic therapy. What's that? Um, it's like transmagnetic therapy and if you get approved for it I don't know you go in and they put fucking magnets on your brain I've heard about that too it's what it is they put magnets on your brain it's for like PTSD and uh, I'm like I'm not a war hero I'm not from the war and no, he's but like you but you've PTSD. been shot you've been stabbed you've been raped you've been beaten up you have yeah. fought if you would have said that you did that in Iraq what's the difference than Delaware yeah, or Philly got PTSD. yeah so he's like that's where that's where you're you know like anger and like because I'm quick to pop off still no that but makes sense. I'm like a lot better yeah so yeah i'm just microdosing i haven't gotten high on shrooms yet to where i've hallucinated yeah but um i tried to microdose and started hallucinating you so did i was like, I, was like no, I don't know how to microdose <laughs> I, I just take one of the pieces or two of the pieces of chocolate so what i'm doing and then i dream oh, okay. like shapes and colors and it's like weird shit yeah or i'll dream something i completely forgot about People, and someone like, told me the microdose, and I was like, I like looked at the dose, so I did it, and I was like, I'm tripping balls. Were you? This is not my, I was like, this is not a fucking microdose, I'm tripping balls. <laughs> I'm literally, I was sweating, I had to go outside, I was like, my whole fucking day is ruined. No, no, that's People not microdosing. I'm microdosing. I'm like, no, no, I'm fucking tripping you here. You got a strong piece of something. Right, and yeah. I still, I still keep, I have like the chocolate bar, I'm like, I'm not touching this. I was like, fuck <laughs> this, like microdose. I'm happy you actually know the right doses and is actually working for you. I love that. Yeah. Okay, great. That's, that's great advice. So yeah. at the end of every episode, we're done here. We always say what we're not done with. Okay. Uh, it could be like pop culture or otherwise. What are you not done with? What are you into right now? I'm in. I'm still. I'm just. I'm into learning more about like new hip hop because I gave up on new it. New hip hop. Yeah, I okay. gave up on it. I gave up on. So who's the, the new, new hip hop? I don't know. I'm liking like Travis Scott, Future. Oh, okay. What about that uh, sexy red? Oh, I love sexy red <laughs> and uh, what's the girl? Ice Spice. Ice Spice. Yeah. Sexy red can get it, girl. If you had come <laughs> Wait, Ice Spice or sexy red? Both of them. Oh, so everyone okay. hates sexy red, but like, I like her. I, like, I just I saw mean, her on I Theo like Von's song podcast. With Drake. Yeah, is that with him? Oh yeah, yeah. Drake is okay. Yeah, he's me grab ass. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love so, that you're not done with new hip hop. So I was, and I was giving up on it. I was only listening to the 90s, early 2000s. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, and God, then God, God. my uh, my friend's uh, granddaughter came up to see how old I am. I just hosted my friend's granddaughter at my apartment, and I listened to hip hop the whole way, at old school. And they're just like, Aunt Sherry, you need to like <laughs> figure this out. So I said, All right, one car ride a day, I'll listen to new new shit on Spotify. Okay. And, I love yeah, okay, and so I like new, it. I like Megan it. is yeah. great. Megan the Stallion. I do love her too. I yeah. love Megan. Well, yeah. I feel like she has an old school flow. No, she does. Okay, she does. Okay, yeah, great. Foxy, I love that. I, I really yeah. love that. Um, um, what I'm not done with this week, I I just watched a uh, Tyler Perry's new documentary on Prime. It's like it's called somebody's baby. I forgot, but anyway. Did you like it? Here's the thing: I don't fuck with Tyler Perry because my mama like him, right? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this like ghetto shit, like church lady, black old lady shit. Medea. But, right, but after watching um, the documentary, his story is so inspiring. Yeah. Like it's just like I had no idea about the trauma of his childhood. Bad. And like, yeah. granted, we do in the black community, we don't like him because we think he has negative like kind of depictions of um, African-American women. That's right. But it's based off his life. And, like, Mm -hmm. I just have a new appreciation for Tyler Perry. So that's kind of, like, what I'm done with. Right, right. No, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's so interesting. Uh, But, yeah, thank you so much, Sherry. It's been amazing No, thank you. you. I'm grateful for you. Like I said, um, you, you, Priya, and... Gilberto, go. Gilberto. Gilberto. Yeah. That's my boy. I don't want to mispronounce his name. You were the first three that I met in comedy that I really liked. Aww. That I was like, I vibe with these people. Like, I fuck with them. You know? Aww, like, so. You're just always so busy. I can't, I can't, I'm I can't busy... catch you in these comedy streets. <laughs> I am a busy bitch. But I'm going to start be... hunting you down again. I'm going to start. Be, I do be outside. So, you'll, yeah. you'll, I'll, I'll be around. Yeah. My calendar's up, kind of. But anyway. No, for real. Thank you for having me. Thank you for 
bring me to this legit no, studio. Oh. You're a great producer. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. She this smells is... good too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been another episode. We're done here. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh.